Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and if you're a regular to this channel, you've probably seen one of my Choosing a Laptop series. Basically every hardware generation, more or less, I do an updated guide on picking the right laptop for game development. I take into effect things like, well, cost, the uh, portability requirements, battery requirements, and, uh, you know, of course, the tasks that you're going to do in game development, 3D modeling, programming, and so on. And I kind of look at what the best things that are happened out there are. We also look at the changes that happen in the industry. For example, this generation, there was the RTX changes. And then using this information, I go together and I basically run through kind of the, the low and the high end, if it's possible, for the various manufacturers that are out there to make my recommendations. So you see here uh, with Acer, we've got the Helio on the lower end for about a thousand bucks or the Triton at more like the 2000 and plus mark and then kind of goes on so Asus we have the Zephyrus on the high end the Strix on the low end and so on we kind of run through some of the best recommendations between Gigabyte HP, Lenovo, Microsoft, MSI, Razer, and so on. And at the end of this generation, I pretty much update every two years. And my older Lenovo, it's all right. It, the machine's still going fine. It's been about two years since I bought it. But the problem is I just made a mistake when I bought it. So I bought a Lenovo Yoga 720 with a 1050 GPU with the idea that I would hook it up via Thunderbolt to a 1080 external GPU. But truth of the matter is Thunderbolt as a technology is annoying. The cables are like 12 inches long, and if you go over a certain size, which is not much bigger than that, maybe 18 inches, you start to lose performance. So you actually have to put the thing right beside your laptop at all time. At the same time, the Thunderbolt connector is minusculely small and easy to knock out. And then on top of that, the fact that I had a dedicated GPU in the machine it crashed every time I hooked up an external GPU. Now that's on Windows and not on the laptop, but the Thunderbolt experience just wasn't my favorite. So now what's gonna happen basically is I'm going to take that Thunderbolt enclosure in that laptop and they're gonna basically become a desktop for me. And that segues into another fact, is people will say, well, why don't you just pick out a desktop. There's tons of desktop out there. You know, you get more bang for your buck and so on. Well, the truth of the matter is it just doesn't fit my lifestyle. As it stands, I do a lot of travel and it doesn't necessarily mean travel across the country. Sometimes it's just travel across my house. Sometimes there's noise on one end of the house. So I've got to go record stuff somewhere else. Sometimes it's my kid being annoying and I need to get away. Sometimes my kid needing attention, but I still want to get some work done. So having a laptop and being able to move around, not to mention, you know, pick up and go to a coffee shop for a little while. That's pretty big deal to me. So a laptop is pretty much a requirement for me. If you are part of the desktop master race and you love your computer, I'm not here to try and convince you. But if you are like me, someone that has fully decided that it is time to move into the world of laptops and you're looking for an ideal one for game development, well, that's why I put all of this together. Now, this year's guide, I was sincerely in the market. I was getting really kind of fed up with the whole Thunderbolt experience. And my final conclusion is this is just too expensive. This is not really worth it this year. I'm going to sit this one out. So my requirements were what I wanted for myself. My baseline was I wanted a six core GPU, 16 gigs of RAM dual channel that could be upgraded to 32 or 64 in the future. I wanted an SSD drive, obviously, preferably at about half a gig in size. Um, 14 to 15 inch form factor, less than five pounds, uh, a max Q 2070 or 2080 GPU, and two grand or less USD. And it was that two grand or less USD part that killed the whole search. Things were just, it was more like three grand to get what I wanted, which was insane. But then Black Friday happened and I managed to pick up a new machine. And that's what I bought. So here is the list of recommendations and the machine I bought is actually on the recommended list. And I will go through and tell you what I didn't buy. So I didn't buy an Acer because I don't really, I, their, their build quality has never impressed me to be honest. That, that's going to be a common theme here. If they've got a lot of flex or plasticky bits, I never feel safe owning that machine. I'm not that impressed on the whole. Um, Asus, Asus isn't bad. The only machine I would really fit my needs was the Zephyrus though. And the Zephyrus moved the keyboard to the front. And that is never going to work with me. I do a lot of writing. That's another requirement I have. I need to have a decent keyboard and I don't really want a number pad. At the same time, I do enjoy having a trackpad and this to the side thing just ain't gonna happen. So while this machine is very small, has a great battery, uh, is well built, I, I just can't handle this layout. It was a non-starter for me. Dell doesn't make anything powerful enough. The Alienware, yeah, I, I kept an eye on them. The M15 is smaller now. It's uglier than sin in my humble opinion. But at, at the end of the day, I don't care too, too much about that. You know, I don't want to whip it out at a coffee shop. That sounds really bad, but I don't want to whip my machine out at a coffee shop and like 
you know, boy racer dragon stripes with a flaming dragon head on the outside. I just want it to look like a laptop, you know? So there is an aspect of looks. Now, Gigabyte Aero, the machine before the Lenovo I'm using, my backup machine, that 970M powered machine I use sometimes, it's a Gigabyte. It's the predecessor to the Aero 15, and it, it's pretty good. And the 15 got to a better build quality. It's an all, uh, I think, aluminum case now, possibly magnesium, but I think it's aluminum. Um, the build quality seems really nice, and I came very, very close to picking the Aero 15X. And uh, there's a good reason for that. I could have actually gotten a similar spec to what I got, except at 4K and doubled the amount of SSD for the same price. So there was a lot going for it. I was a little iffy on 4K overall, uh, but this was one of the front runners for me. Now, where they ultimately lost me was, once again, on their keyboard. If you can see here, they've got... Um, uh, a number pad over here and I don't want a number pad on my keyboard I don't want a cramped keyboard experience and at the same time and this would have I would have been fine with it if they didn't offset the trackpad too and I, I would never get over that to be honest it would drive me nuts forever I don't want to have to type offset to my center position and really it was the keyboard layout that made me decide in the favor of the way I ultimately went HP yeah Lenovo did that last time if I was looking for a little bit more entry level the um the Y520 Legion looks like a great machine this round, but I was looking for something a little bit higher up the spec chain this time. Uh, Microsoft Surfaces weren't out in time, and then since then they released the Surface 15-inch, and that laptop, it, I don't get it. They, they took the 13, and they put it in a 15-inch packer, but they left it with a 40-watt-hour battery. The thing gets, like four hours whereas the 13 inch gets 12 like it's just stupid i don't know what microsoft were thinking on that one but yeah it didn't make the list i've actually always found msi machines to be a little bit too plastic for my liking i never really gotten over that and a lot of them once again have the number pad keyboard so if you can't guess where i ended up i ended up right here so i got a razor blade advanced 2070 max q 16 gigs um dual channel uh, it's the 9750 uh, CPU in there. Uh, and I have to say, across the board, I am delighted with the machine. Now, I have had a Razer. So before the Aero or the Gigabyte, I had the original 2013 edition of the Razer Blade. And it is an incredibly well-built machine. And the, the, the tolerance levels they build these things to is amazing. They really are uh, up there with the 2015 and 2016, back when MacBooks were still good, their build qualities were about the same. Razer really nails that. The problem is Razer's support is garbage. And I know that's a big negative with them. And their prices are insane. But with Black Friday, I got it around the two grand mark, which made it very much a worthwhile purchase to me. So that's what I have done. Now, the nice thing that you may have noticed is I was using my backup machine more and more often. So the 970 and some of my stuff would be chugging. Now, what you're seeing here, and this is going on in the background while I was doing this entire video. So I'm doing video recording and I have Godot third person shooter demo running in the background and it runs butterly smooth. So the nice thing for you guys is my videos should look, you know, the frame rates shouldn't be chugging quite as much. I should be able to look at RTX stuff. I'm not really that excited about RTX yet. I'm getting a little bit more so now that it's being supported by uh, Blender and content creation tools and all the game engines have it out of the box. But in terms of games, I don't really care that much. But this is running and my microphone is set up right beside the computer and hopefully you don't hear it that much. And that's one of the things that really impresses me is the fans weren't bad at all. And the thing is, this isn't all I've got running. I've also got Unreal Engine running and it's running super smooth, looks super good. And I have the fans running at max speed in the background and I can barely hear them. This plus five plus hour battery life, plus a keyboard and form factor I like, plus a fit and finish to a machine that makes me feel confident. And the hardware specs are there. This will last me at least two years into the future. I think I made a solid choice. There were a couple of things I did find a bit shocking about the machine. Uh, having had a Razer back in 2013, it's gotten a lot heavier and a lot thicker. So this thing is by no means a fat machine and it's by no means a heavy machine. It's something like 4.8 pounds, but I think it's it's a good 15 or 20% heavier and thicker than the original Razer. Now at the same time though, the original Razer couldn't like, it couldn't handle the heat and it would burn you. Whereas this one's, it's not bad at all. You can feel a little bit of heat in the keyboard, but not so bad. I can even put it on my lap without, you know, fear for not being able to have children again. So um, yeah. 
I'm impressed with the machine on the whole, and I would so far heartily recommend it. So I figured I'd just do a follow-up because I do these guides, you know, and people will often ask me, well, what machine do you use or what machine did you pick, you know? And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go ahead and recommend things that I wouldn't, you know, potentially use myself. Uh, so here is my recommendations, and here was kind of why I didn't pick certain things on this list. So again, there are some other great options. So if you're looking in that 2000-ish dollar range USD, um, maybe a little bit higher depending on the spec you're looking for uh again the zephyrus is a great choice if you can get over this keyboard layout i simply couldn't it, it's got a really high build quality great specs good battery uh, it's probably the lightest of these all it's thinner than um, the razor by a fair margin but i i can't get over that uh, the one that really came close though this was almost a coin toss between the, the razor blade 15 was the arrow 15x and um the, the 15x was just so close and in fact i could get a terabyte more storage i got a half a gig i could have got sorry i got a half a terabyte in the razor for the same price i could have gotten a terabyte and i could have gotten a 4k display in this particular case i went with 144 hertz display and i have a 4k monitor so i can hook up to it and do 4k movies if i so desire uh but for the most part i think that in a laptop my last one is 4k as well and it's just a battery drain so i kind of lean towards the uh, 144 hertz display at the 1080p level over 4k but this case i could have gotten it for the same price at the 4k whereas for razor razor still screws you for upgrades they've really learned from apple there so if you want to get a 4k display it's like three or four hundred dollars more or if you want to get the 240 hertz display which is absolutely useless that's something like two hundred dollars more um so at the price point everything just kind of came up to, to perfectly for me and the other thing that i really like this is very minor i like the move towards this mercury white i like it not just being a black slab anymore even though it does look a little apple-ish um I, I like the option and the coloring and they actually uh both of them have an option along those lines and that's actually what i did i got the mercury white option in the end so anyways that's the follow-up that is the, the laptop i got and once again the reason why and this comes up so many of these videos why would you get a laptop oh it's because i need to move around it's pretty straightforward for the most part. Yes, I could have maybe gotten more desktop. Um, and the thing also on that level, I don't want to build my own PC ever again. And the number of places where I can actually get a PC anymore, even in a big city like Toronto, it's going way down. And the stuff that you can actually buy. So if I go down to the local Best Buy and say I want to buy a gaming machine, what they're selling me is crap. So I don't know. Laptops seem to be a good choice for me in my lifestyle. But of course, you could fit desktop or you could definitely build your own desktop. And if that's what you want to do, all the power to you. But if you're like me and you're looking for a mid to high end laptop for game development, uh, I have the 2019 Razer, the second gen of it, and I personally highly recommend it so far. All right, that's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.